So to me on High Rock it becomes a battle of what I think I know and what I, what the fish are trying to tell me. And so coming into this year, at least I had the knowledge that this was a big fish factory and my goal was to try to conquer it. Hey guys, Jack Dice here. Welcome back to another episode of Up and Coming. And this tournament took place on High Rock in the summer of 2019. Now, if you guys haven't seen any of my other Up and Coming series videos, if you watched the series last year, you might have seen the High Rock event. And that event went pretty badly, pretty terrible. So, High Rock has kind of become my nemesis. And coming into this tournament, my goal was to conquer it. Yeah, last year I had the two, I practiced for the tournament on High Rock in 2018 for two days, and in two days I got zero keeper bites and going to the, went into the tournament and struggled, caught two fish, and it took like 17 pounds to cash a check and like 24 pounds to win. So it was an absolute blowout event, and it was an absolutely humbling experience because it was one where I thought the fishing was terrible, worst I'd ever seen, and it was like phenomenal. One of the best weight tournaments I've ever been in. And it was like, wow, you know nothing. And so coming into this year, at least I had the knowledge that this was a big fish factory, and my goal was to try to conquer it. And so to me on High Rock, it becomes a battle of what I think I know and what I, sh what the fish are trying to tell me. And I'll explain that, is, is that, you know, it's summertime in North Carolina. It's hot, the water temperatures are really getting up, and to me, that tells me in my mind that I should really, I, my, my heart, I wanna be off the bank. I wanna be offshore, I wanna be fishing deep. Have mixing in a deep water game plan into what I'm doing somehow. But on High Rock, looking at the way that the tournaments have been won in recent years, typically, they're won within a cast of the bank, usually shallower. And so, it's fighting what I, all the textbooks in bass fishing say, and what I think I should know. And so, coming into this event, I was trying, I was really, really scratching my head in practice, trying to figure out what I could do differently this time around to make a difference. And last time, I kinda, in during the tournament on High Rock last year, when things started slowing down, I caught two fish in one creek down by the dam, and then I left after catching those two fish to go try other areas and it didn't work. And so coming into this event, in my mind, I wanted to find a home and just grind it out because I figured though, though the fish are big, you're not getting a lot of bites. So I wanted to find a place where I could just stay all day and not move around, which is typically not what I like to do. Typically, I like to run around. I like to have multiple areas. I like to run the whole lake in a day if I can. But I felt thought that maybe my problem with High Rock last time that was that I had fished too fast and fished too many places instead of staying in a home. And so, but again, the battle was still in my mind. Do I want to fish shallow or deep? And first day of practice, I actually had boat problems and I couldn't practice most of the day. Got, ended up going down to a local mechanic, getting it fixed, got it worked out pretty fast. And I ended up being able to go out from practice for a few hours that afternoon. So I decided to spend those few hours in the same creek where I'd caught the few fish in the tournament last year. And I had a pretty dang good afternoon. I fished all offshore places. I mean, I had probably 17, 18 pounds without even trying, caught a six, a five, another five, and the last spot I found, I graphed over it, and the fish were all dotted up along the bottom perfectly, like they, the, all the textbooks show offshore bass should be. And that one, I made one cast with my bait, it never hit the bottom, I caught a four pounder and I left. You know, so all these places I would catch a fish on these points and different offshore breaks, I would catch a fish and leave. And so in my mind, I said, well, I know they're supposed to be shallow, but wow, what a day out deep. And so the next day, I went out looking to do the same thing in different areas of the lake, uh, the next day of practice. And I caught a fish here, caught one there fishing offshore, but not really that great. And then I went back and fished some more. We decided to say, all right, I'll go try the bank, trying to figure out what this fish were doing. and really didn't do anything. Caught one fish and, and then fished it for a long, long time on the bank and never had any more bites. And so, once again, I was in the same dilemma. 
the results on this lake speak to the shallow bite, yet I want to go offshore and now I've had a phenomenal day of practice offshore. So coming into the tournament, in my mind, it was made up. Regardless of the fact that I knew that those offshore spots were obvious and that other people might fish them, I figured, well, it's the only place I really caught fish. I have to go try it. So in my mind, I was going to go to this creek down by the dam and I was going to spend the whole day there and I was going to grind it out and make it work in that creek no matter what. I was a, a, about a, a pretty late boat number, so I knew I really wanted to get on the spot where I'd graft up a huge school of them, but I figured I probably wasn't going to be able to. And I run down and got into the creek, got to that point, and there was, yeah, there were two boats sitting on it. So I said, all right, no good. So I ran farther up the creek to an other offshore place that was a little bit off the wall. It's a little bit shallower. And I start winding a crankbait around, trying to look for an active fish in the morning. And I'm fishing, I'm fishing, and it was kind of slow. nothing was happening. It was kind of slow, but I figured that's just how it is here on High Rock. Just when I'm but just when I'm losing hope, I'm like, man, I've been here for a while, nothing. Just getting ready to pull the plug when my crankbait locks up. Yeah. Net. 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 Oh. Big one. Big one. Big one. I don't know. I think left. Oh my gosh. There we go. <laughs> this is what we're fishing for out here. That just affirms everything. I'm like, this is where I need to be. The docks, I haven't gotten a single good bite off the dock. They're all. And then you catch that, dude, it locked up. This is how I see where you just pick Heck yeah. Wow. Nah, I don't think so. I caught one almost five the other day that had a coal hole in it, like two coal holes in them. I'm like, who is putting coal tags? Like, I understand it's a good lake, but my gosh. On how big was the fish? It was like a four and a half pounder. Yeah, I I'm like, what are you thinking? That's a nice person. That's a great first fish. <laughs> I always love catching the first one. It means I'm not getting skunked. Yeah. That's my that's like my number one priority every day. Oh, yeah. I'm like, let's we'll start with not being embarrassed. Then we'll move on to catch a limit. Then we'll move on to how can we win or whatever. I felt like, I don't know. I'm just trigger, <laughs> trigger happy right now. Really was just gonna depend. Oh, really yeah. the only thing that was gonna make the big difference, I wanted to stay, I wanna stay deep all day if I can. Yeah. But the, the, the difference was gonna be if, like, they just didn't bite at all. And it was like, all right, we'll go fish docks and some lay downs and stuff like that. But yeah. that one bite's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a whole lot of fish out here. It's hard to differentiate size really on those because it's just but so that that would look like multiple little fish. Sometimes it's bait. Yeah. Oh never mind. He's little. I don't think so, but I'm gonna check him for sure. Thirteen and a quarter. Oops, hey buddy. It's left. It's gonna give you a nice release. Okay, so of course I'm editing this 
obsessed fishing throwback up and coming episode. I'm going through all the old footage. That's really what I'm trying to do this year is I want to just try to get more consistent. I've got, you, you know, really I've got like two and a half years worth of tournaments with footage and breakdowns like this. A lot of it's broken down. But of course, my camera must have stopped recording when I was analyzing this High Rock tournament. So I don't have any more analyzation from that angle. So I'm going to give you the play-by-play -play from here. So basically, what happened after that? So I thought, again, had that terrible practice. I thought, okay, I need to just not run around. I'm gonna, the, clearly the deep pattern will work, which I saw from practice. I took that to say, yes, fish will bite deep on this lake. I couldn't get the shallow deal going. So I'm like, well, this is the only thing I have going. The only thing difference is I need to just lock in. I need to lock in. These fish are gonna bite at some point and I just need to be here when it happens. So I cannot run around. So I just start fishing and fishing and fishing. You know, I continue. Then that first bite to me was the, I thought was like the game changing bite. It was like the affirmation bite, which is, you know, that one bite, that one clue you're looking for that tells you what you're keying in, something you're keying in on, something you're looking for is right. And I thought that was it. But I start getting into my rotation here. I start fishing the number of points and it wasn't long before I actually ran back to that original point that I wanted to start on that had a huge school of fish on it. And there were no boats there, which that's usually, if the school was biting like they were in practice, that shouldn't happen. So that should have been my first bad sign. But I start going through a rotation of areas and it's just very difficult to get anything going. And so I catch a few small fish here and there. And eventually the voices in your head, as the hours start to click by, the voices in your head start going again, like, mm, maybe this isn't the deal. So I said, well, here's as good as anywhere to slide up shallow so I started fishing around the bank a little bit just trying to keep it honest trying to see if I can buy a few bites yeah. three quarter and I catch a few more small fish but once again I, I just cannot get anything going I don't know why I could not seem to put two and two together and I feel pretty confident as a shallow water angler like that is generally like coming in at this time in my life looking back on these tournaments this that was like the, what I did like I was just learning the offshore thing and I wasn't that great at it so that's why getting a bite like that in the beginning of the day should have been, in my mind, it was like, well, I'm not very good at this. I don't understand this. And yet I got this giant bite. When I can't get bit doing what I'm comfortable doing, that should tell me that the fish are out here. But once again, High Rock had my number. I, it just, I, it, I couldn't put two and two together again. It seemed like I had all the pieces. I had all the, all the pieces of the equation were there. But when I ran the numbers, the answer never was what I thought it was gonna be. My answer was always wrong. And so, once again, I think I, all the, everything was there. There's some tournaments where it's hard to look back and realize what you did wrong. You know, you, your goal with tournaments that don't do well is every tournament that you do well, you take what you did well and you try to apply that and multiply that in the next tournament and you try to eliminate the things you did wrong so that every tournament you get better and better. And that is especially true though in the bad ones. You have so much to learn from because you have so much bad there that you know, well, I can just write all of this off. But the problem is we as fishermen, we don't really do that because there's so many, it's hard to know which variables that we need to eliminate after a bad day on the water. And so coming back to a fishery like High Rock has actually been really cool for me going because it's a fishery where I really struggled the first time. And the fact that we I got to come back again gave me the, the chance to try things and see, try to figure out what variable it was that I wasn't getting right in this equation of this tournament. And so, I thought per perhaps the variable that I was miscalculating was the amount of time that I just need to sit on these spots that offshore fish are weird and that at some point they're going to bite kind of like tidal river fish. You hear about it on the TVA, the afternoon's better, the current pulls at this time, like a tidal river fish, something flips their trigger to that that fish that you've been casting at all day suddenly when he says it's time to eat, it's time to eat and you want to be there when that happens. So I said, I'm just going to. I can't make anything work shallow. I haven't been able to. So I'm gonna just continue to fish deep. 
And that's what I continue to do for hours and hours into the day. Oh, he's little. As you might keep. I don't care if you weigh a pound and a half. B14, buddy. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. If it had been a 10 pounder, I only would have needed two fish. I bought this net years ago because it was the cheapest one. I don't mind it, but crankbaits and rope netting are the worst. Oh, yeah. So I ended up catching keeper number two on a deep crankbait. And it wasn't, the, the, the scary thing with that bite was it wasn't on any of the places I'd gotten bit. It was hardly even a contour at all. I was really just working down the break line of the creek channel at that point. And there was a little point, a very subtle point there. It wasn't much of all and all I got was one bite there. It just felt a little too random. It felt like if the fish were concentrated and were going to be biting offshore, they would be pushing towards those high percentage places where the current is going to be rolling around the high percentage feeding spots the stop sign spots that fish would stop on and it just and the fact that that bite came just kind of randomly roaming down the break line it was just not a good sign and it didn't build anything that i had going because at this point i have one big bite and one keeper and that's it and we're about six seven hours into the tournament and so there's this is where the voices and the, the questions really start to, they start, the questions that were whispering throughout practice and going into the day, now they're screaming. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, because here you are, and I, I'm, again, I'm still fighting it because on one hand, I'm like, well, it only takes five casts to get right. And if these fish turn on offshore, all of a sudden in five casts, I saw what I did that, that, that really, again, that one afternoon of practice, was biting me and then you never it's like practice should never you know be the the guiding star when you're trying to figure out what to do in a tournament you have to just take what you can from it and build on it. you can't get locked into that as final and tournament guys do it all the time and i fell for it here but it was hard because i didn't have any other experience to go on at all i had no other positive experience on the lake and so i like that's the part where i can't fault myself too harshly be, during this tournament because I just had no like I would have gone shallow if I'd ever gotten a bite shallow on this lake but I could like count on one hand the number of keeper bites I've gotten shallow on this lake at this point in my life during this tournament I think I'd had like one in being there for two diff two years back-to-back -back years both practicing multiple days so that's not really much to go on to say oh let's go change and and the fact that that one day of practice I mean it was like half of an afternoon and it was like pulling up on every spot and they were just biting. And so I knew what could happen, how fast it could happen. That 17 pounds I had was in the blink of an eye. But at some point, when you've gone, I don't, it's just, some guys are better at it than me. And certainly I couldn't stand it. It got to a point where I just couldn't stand it anymore. I could not take the voices when it's six, seven hours in and I have committed to it. I really had. Like I'd taste. I'd gone up and sh fish shallow for a little bit here, for a few minutes here, a few minutes there. But I, for the most part, for the set six and a half, seven hours into the day that we're at at this point, I have been offshore 95% of the time, fishing the same five general points that I got all my bites on, and I have two fish to show for it. That is terrible odds. The odds are, if I fish another hour like this. I probably won't even get another bite. And so at some point, you have to pull the plug. And I said, you know what? I've got to, I've got to try something else. I've got to try to do something to salvage this day, get some bites, get some points. So that's when I finally left that creek and I just said, I'm just gonna run around all these places that I've ever gotten a bite on this lake and see what I can do.
No, I don't think so. It was kind of going out pretty fast, the line was, but. Caught multiple bass here before. Never any big ones, it's just a weird spot. It's just some rock and a little bit of a channel swing, but gosh. That, oh, come on. Dang it, that felt big. And I lost a, my hand grip on the handle. Dang. I'm like, man, that thing, you know how we've had having those fish just kind of, you know, bump it and we're like, man, how do they, you know, yeah. no, bad. that's what it kind of felt like. It was just doom, like not slacking it like the other ones. I'm like, ah, it's just little. And I lift it up and it was solid as a rock. So I ended up running up the lake to this one little place where a creek channel bend swings up near the bank on the main lake. And I'd gotten bit on a crankbait there in practice the year before. And I pull up there and I fire my drop shot up there because at this point it's hot. It doesn't seem like the current's flowing. I feel like finesse might be a way to go to get a bite. And at this point, I'm just looking for anything to save my day. But insult to injury, it's hard to make those train wreck days stop. I lose that bite. But, and we're running out of time. I mean, I've got like maybe 30 minutes max. I see, I know around the corner, the only thing I got left to fish, I know around the corner there's a bridge and I've gotten one bite on a bridge before and bridges are just staple places to get bites. So with 30 minutes left to fish, I say, Hail Mary, let's just go fish this bridge. It's all I can do. Net, 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 net. Oh, it's probably a catfish, actually. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, that ain't a giant, but that's 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 a keeper by for show. That helps the cause. But, but what can I do? You know. And so some like some miracle mercy bite from God, I get a couple bites right there on the bridge to kind of make me feel a little bit better about the day is all they did. They weren't big ones, but they were keepers. And on High Rock for me, that was big time. It was a few critical bites to possibly save some points in for my year in that division. So my goal again every year, I want to make the championships. I want to go to try to qualify for that All-American. And you gotta put fish in the boat to do that. So even if, so really, that's what I love about the BFLs is that unlike just a Wednesday nighter, it's not so all or nothing. Every bite matters because points matter, because points races, whether you're contending for a title, for a top five in the Angler of the Year, or you're just trying to scrape into a regional, even when you can't, even when you don't cast a check, you get points. And I've always liked that as a motivator. It just keeps you in it all day. And I fished, I actually realized I had a little bit more time and I was able to fish one other point. But other than that, that was about it. That was all she wrote for High Rock Lake. I took it back to weighing. No, I don't think so. Oh, sorry. I was really hoping it was. That would have been pretty awesome. Class cast. Yeah, we gotta go. Had the bites, lost the one fish. That sucks, but hey, it was looking way worse. So I'll take for now. Obviously, I'd like to have 20 pounds, but. Magic touch. Right, you, just, you can just head to the floor. All right, let's get these suckers done. So, 33. I only got four. 
lung's not doing so good. It's like, this like kicks my butt. I think that's what I'm starting to learn. Lynchburg, Virginia, who's on the bottom side of the Jack Dice. Let's go ahead and get it. 13th in the fourth. Good job, Sheer Man. Thank you. He's got four bass today. Jack's four bass. He'll weigh 10 pounds, 8 ounce, 10 8. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. So just like that, I weigh in four bass, one short of the limit for 10 pounds, eight ounces, I believe. And that was all I could muster. And that one, I mean this, going back to a lake that had just utterly destroyed me the first time and then saying, okay, let's, re let's rethink this. And then just not, the rethinking not working at all and going back to the same coming to the same conclusion that I did the first time around, which is, oh, I just need to fish offshore, and then getting bit again, it was just like, it was a really, I mean, this was a mentally, this was a confidence-destroying type of tournament right here, just because it was, in some ways, just because of all of those, again, you want every time you that you have a bad tournament, to, that, that needs to be a lesson, so a stepping stone to move forward to be better the next time. And it felt like I just fell for everything again. But at the same point in time, there's also something to be said for staying mentally in it for eight hours. That's one of the hardest parts and one of the separators between guys who have good days consistently and just randomly have good days. When everything goes right, it's easy to stay in it mentally because you're always engaged. But in these, when it's tough like this, it's very hard to stay mentally engaged all day. And looking at this tournament, I pretty much did. And part of that was having this game plan that I wasn't gonna get mentally spun out because I told myself no matter what, I got nothing else to go on. I eliminated variables by saying, I'm gonna be fishing these couple points. And it really felt like it had the potential to work. And so have with those two things in mind, I can't look at it and it's a complete negative, a complete failure as far as decision making goes. And so at the end of the day, just got to chalk it up to valuable points. I was sitting 13th going into this tournament. I don't remember exactly where this moved me up, but it moved me up a decent amount just to have four fish cash. And they were decent. I mean, four fish for 10 pounds, that's a decent average. It was a lot. Thankfully, the fishing was a lot tougher this time around on the majority of the field than the first time I went to High Rock. The first time I went to High Rock, it took like 17 pounds to cash a check. This time it was nowhere near that. It was maybe 13 or 14 pounds or something like that. And so with 10, 10 and some change, you know, I wasn't that, actually I was really one big bite away. And I had, I, you know, of course you never know, everyone loses fish, but that one fish I had on the drop shot felt big. It felt right. Do I think it was enough to cash a check? Do I think it was a four pounder? I don't know, probably not, but you never know. And so as far as takeaways from this event, there's something mentally that's good for building mental toughness when it comes to having a game plan and sticking with it and based on the variables and decisions. If it's an educated decision, an educated game plan, when you eliminate enough of the variables where you say, I've eliminated enough to make to do one thing that I think is going to give me the best chance to do well in the tournament. So there's something mentally building about that when you stick with it and i'm notorious for not sticking with it i i really just if i don't get bites immediately i love to run around and there's times where that really is advantageous to an angler i mean i look at a guy like brian thrift he's one of my angling idols like i i love brian thrift's game and i've tried to model some of my game off of what he does and that's typical Brian Thrift. Is he, if he doesn't get bit in 15 minutes, he's gone. He's running all over the lake. He's hitting high percentage places fast. But there are just times and certain lakes and certain conditions where that doesn't work, even for Thrift. And he, in his later career, listening to him talk about changes he's made, that's something he's kind of, as he's gotten older, he's kind of gotten away from. And so it's really, angling is, there's so many variables in fishing. There is never one set way of doing things that will work 100% of the time, no fail, with no failure. And so you have to adapt what your style of fishing is to the fishery and the time of year and the conditions and everything to give yourself the best advantage. And so even though I didn't stick with it all day, I mean, I didn't stick with the game plan all day. I, I bailed on it with like an hour less than, well, about an hour left, maybe, maybe less. I can't remember exactly. But the other thing about it, that's the other side of this is 
I'm proud of myself for sticking with it, but also, at some point, you can't be too stubborn in fishing, because when I went and changed up and just tried to do whatever I could think of to get a bite, I had three bites. I was one, I was execute, other than one fish I didn't execute on properly, I was, you know, I had the bites to have a limit, which for how tough the fishing has been for me on High Rock, that would have been big time. And that came from making adjustments and when I finally just said, forget it, let's just do whatever we can and try, just go try stuff. And that just, so there's the there's two sides of it. There's there's You can't beat yourself up too much about the variables that you can't control and the unknowns you can't foresee. You know, my practice was I caught only, the only bites I had were offshore. They were all big ones. They happened really, it happened really fast and it was mostly in the afternoon. So you take all those variables and then you take, okay, I also practiced for a week last year and I practiced shallow a bunch this time and I've had almost zero bites doing that ever. So it's hard to just say, oh yeah, you should have just gone shallow or gone up to this creek or, but at the same point in time, that's just part of the, this is, that's part of the growing process as an angler too, is you have to start learning to be comfortable to make those decisions, especially in situations like this when something is just clearly not working, something's not right, whatever variable is missing in the equation to make those offshore fish bite, it was gone. It was gone in this tournament. So takeaways is sometimes you have to, you know, to set yourself up mentally to have a good tournament, I think sometimes it's good to have a game plan that you can lock into, especially when it's tough. You're trying to make the most of eight hours and just give yourself the highest percentage chance. You know, really a lot of times bass fishing to me, tournament fishing is a lot about just risk reward management. You say, it's about, it's an odds game. You say, if I throw this bait in this type of scenario for this much time, I'm going to get five bites that work out. That's really what every angler is doing and they're all betting on what those combinations are that they can put their variables in and, and gamble on that if they do it for an amount of time, that the risk reward payoff is enough that they're gonna make it work. But you also have to adjust that because fishing out in the elements, chasing things with their own little hit brains, you gotta make those adjustments too. So never get too locked in. It's been said time and time again, you can't get too locked in, but also you have to find that balance in fishing between a lot understanding and having a cognitive game plan and then also making decisions in the moment off of instinct and finding that harmony is one of the hardest things in fishing so in a tournament like this i feel like i did a little bit of both and i learned from it i learned where locking into the game plan too much hurt me and where you also just can't let say go into it with nothing you have to have a starting point so just take from it and learn learn from the mistakes Learn that you gotta adjust sometimes, and then also sometimes there's variables you just won't be able to control or understand. And that's why you have to keep spending time on the water, keep putting hours in so that next time, next time when you see that scenario, you're better prepared. So that's exactly what this tournament did for me. It's it's prepared for me. When I've seen scenarios like this since then, my decision making has been better because of days like this on the water. So thank you guys so much for watching this throwback episode of Up and Coming. God bless, tight lines. We'll see you next time.